In 2020, Wix released a tutorial explaining how to create a wish list function inside of your Wix Store's application. This was right before they actually released the native function that you can turn on and off via their app settings. There is a catch to the native function. In order for you to turn it on and off, you must install the Members Area app. We've provided a link to Wix's tutorial on our blog post. We've created a tutorial of our own. It has less code and it explains a couple of different ways to implement the page settings and code logic. It does require users to log in. We do want to remember who created that item so they can remove it when they return in the future. So if you follow my tutorial, together we can make this wish list function totally codable. Using the YouTube settings, click on the description of the video below so you can find the link to this tutorial page. On this page, you'll find the links to the Wix tutorial app and also the link on how to turn on and off the wishlist function within the Wix stores app. If you're reading my tutorial blog post and you see that it says tutorial video coming soon, I cannot edit that. Dear Wix, I posted this blog last year. Now I am unable to edit it because it says the blog post is too long and I must delete information. Unfortunately, I cannot delete information because it is very important that we follow all the steps. I will add a secondary blog post referencing this video and linking to the original code. Now, as a bonus, we are going to create an add to cart for one single item and then for the entire wish list. Let's follow along and visit the tutorial site. Click on the link or visit codecoin.wixsite.com slash wishlist 2020. Once you visit the site, let's browse and let's check out these items on our tutorial site. You'll notice that you'll see a button that says login to save. I've added two different variations. One is I added a favorites button, which is one single button that will do the adding and deleting. But I also added two other buttons above the product page. One is to add and one is to delete. Now let's learn about the logic and requirements. For our tutorial, we are using products that have zero variations or zero extra choices. This allows us to use the native Wix widget that is located on the product details page, which is this one. Now you can use this wishlist method on items that have multiple variations, but you will have to code the entire product page from scratch in order to implement the wishlist function. The second requirement that we need to talk about is the user. In order for a user to create and save a wishlist and then come back to it later, the user has to be logged in as a member of your website. So you will have the choice to make and decide at what point this user will be logging in. Our wishlist tutorial has two methods for this. Method number one uses zero code by simply changing the product page settings so that it's set to members only. This means the user must be logged in before they can actually view the product details page. So if the user is not logged in, the website will prompt up the login window and you can either use the Wix native login window or create your own custom login window. Now the second method uses some code on the product details page to check if the person is logged in before they can see add to wish list button, meaning they can view the page, stay on the page for as long as they like, and then we force them to log in in order to start adding to their wish list. Method number two usually works better for most people because they don't want to block any indexing to be done by Google, which can ultimately hurt your SEO. Method number one and two, we need to do the first step together. We need to create a database so that it holds all of our wish list items. They click, it stores. Let me move on over to the editor so I can show you how to create a database collection. If this panel is closed, 
click on it to open it up. Using the left panel, click on the database icon. Hover over the word Content Collections. Click on the plus sign to create a new collection. Give it a name and configure the settings. I already have my wishlist collection made, so I'm going to edit the settings to show you what custom permissions we have used for this tutorial. The site member author can read everything that they add into this database. Anyone who is logged in can create content for this database. The person that created the content will be able to update and delete it. In our example, we only need one field in the database, and that is the reference field. We call it product ID. The reference field will be connected to the stores slash products collection. You can configure it this way. Now, if you're following method number one for members only permissions, click on the site menu, look for store pages, then click on product page and click on the settings. From the settings, you will set the permissions. This is what they look like. Click on Members Only and select All Members. You do have to decide if you want one or two buttons for the product page. We labeled our buttons in this fashion. Hashtag Add Button, Hashtag Delete Button, and Hashtag One Button. Place the buttons wherever you like on the page. We added the One Button down here and then the add and delete button up here. This is the code that you'll be using based on these permissions where the page is detecting if the person is logged in or not. Once you have your two buttons and the page permissions, you can copy and paste this entire code. Let me show you in the editor where you would paste it. Using the arrows down here, you open this panel, highlight anything that's already on this page. You can use Control A and then use Control V to paste the code. You notice we've added some notes on this code to help you modify and customize the code to fit your database and your buttons. It is a really long code. Make sure that all of the elements in the code are labeled correctly. Let's move on to method number two for public permissions. You'll visit the product page the same way. You'll decide if you want one or two buttons and then label them. As for the permissions, do not change the permissions. Leave it as everyone. If you scroll down on the tutorial page, you'll see a copy of the entire code. Make sure to copy it all the way down and paste it on your page. It is a really long code. You're welcome. <laughs> Remember that the code will tell you which lines to remove depending which buttons you choose to keep or delete. Let's recap step number one and step number two. Regardless of which method you chose, so far this is what you have completed. You've created one database collection to store all the wishlist items for your website members. You have one or two button elements that you have added to your Wix stores product page. You have configured the product page permissions on the Wix stores product page. And the page code has been added to your Wix stores product page to trigger the correct function for each button. Now let's move on to step number three. Regardless of which method you're following, everyone has to do this part. We need to create a regular page to display this wish list. Using your menu, add a new page, label it, and then click on the settings to set the permissions. Make sure it's set to members only and you mark it as all members. This is the page where they're going to visit to physically see everything that they have added to their wish list. The elements that we have used are one button to add all items to the cart. I 
no, it says card, but I can't change it, which says my blog post is too long. <laughs> We've added one button to load more items. Maybe they have a really long list and we don't want to load all of them at once because it will slow down the page. So we'll load only a few and then allow them to click on the load more button. If you don't want them to click on the load more button, visit our tutorial that shows you how to create a lazy loading effect. You'll have to modify this code because I don't have the complete example on this blog post. We have used one text element to display a success message. We have used one repeater to display all of the wishlist items. We've used a repeater button to add a single item to the cart. We've added another repeater button to delete the single item from the wishlist. We used a collapse strip to display a message when the wishlist is empty. We used one transparent strip to display the load more button. And we have one data set that will be connecting to the wishlist database collection. Now we did add other regular text and button elements for simple titles and call to actions that were not connected via code. This was just to add some design to our page. The data set is connected to our wishlist database collection with the following settings. Wishlist, read and write, limit to four, and a filter for the owner is logged in. Now, with the exception of the Add to Cart button, all of the other repeater elements will be connected directly to the wishlist data set. Our settings look something like this. The image is connected to the main image of the product database. The text is connected to the name. The delete button is connected to the delete function. Remember, we did not connect the Add to Cart button to the data set. The code to Add to Cart. To allow a member to add an individual repeater referenced item to the Wix store's cart, we connected the Add to Cart button via code. In order for this to work, you must have a shopping cart element on your page. For example, the Wix store's app automatically added a shopping cart element pinned to our header area, which you will find over here. It automatically names it Shopping Cart Icon 1. So this is what our code looks like when the repeater is ready and when the add to cart button is clicked we're going to get that current item and we're going to add that single item to the cart because we don't know if a member will delete one or multiple or all items from their wish list we decided to add an extra code to check the number of items that are left when the data set changes if there are zero number of items on the members wish list then we want to expand the collapse strip to encourage a call to action. In our example, we added a regular button linked to the shop page. Our code looks like this. When the count is greater than zero, we want to expand the wishlist strip and the load more strip. And we want to collapse the no wishlist. When there is less than one, the opposite will happen. The others will collapse and the no wish list will expand. This is what it looks like on our editor. We have a title. The button is linked directly to the home page. Since we want to trigger the same code when the page first loads, we will add all of the code on our on ready section. So all together, the code that we run over above looks like this. You can copy and paste this code onto your page. As a bonus, we're going to create a bulk add to cart function. So we continue to add additional code after the on ready section. We decided to make it a bit easier to add bulk items in the Wix store's cart. So we triggered our bulk add to cart button via code to get all of the items that are currently in the members wish list and insert them all into the Wix store's cart. When they're successfully added, we want to display a success message for a short period of time to give a visual confirmation to the member. This is our add all to cart and we did activate the on click event from the event panel. Our code looks like this. This is the time in milliseconds 
we have 5,000 milliseconds. You can change that to be smaller or larger. Let's show you how it works. Let's look at my wish list. Looks like I have three items there. Let's shop for some more. And let's add this. Oh, it's been added. Visit the wish list. There it is. Let me go to the cart and delete these. I'm going to add all to cart. And there they are. Let me delete again. And I'm going to add a single item to cart and delete it from my wish list. I'm going to add this item to cart and delete from my wish list. And there you go. If you have a Facebook account, feel free to join our Facebook group. We have almost 4,000 members that will help you whenever you have questions. Thanks for watching. This is Code Queen Ayeli, and I will see you soon. Bye.